This is the 2023 Genesis G70, and more importantly, it's the sporty 3.3 twin turbo V6 version. And we're gonna hit the highlights, both good and bad, on one of the most slept on sports sedans on the market. The Genesis G70. It's been around long enough to receive a pretty significant mid-cycle refresh, but it is technically still in its first generation. We've been all over the pre-facelift car, Paolo owns it, and we've done a head-to-head -head comparison against the BMW M340, which is probably the undisputed segment leader here, but this is a really, really, really close competitor. So we're gonna cover the best and the rest, starting with the rest. First thing we're gonna talk about is the sound. For 2022, the Sport 3.3 V6 models get a new valved exhaust, and it has a couple benefits, actually. It helps the engine breathe better, and that has a power benefit of about three horsepower over the pre-facelifted versions. However, if you were expecting like an AMG snarly, yelly exhaust, you'd, you'd be a bit mistaken here. The sound itself is nice, but I would just like a little bit more volume. And then number two won't come as a surprise to anyone familiar with the G70 platform. It's a pretty kind of cramped rear seat. This is a beautifully proportioned and designed car. It's got an excellent balance and somewhere within that recipe, well, the back seat became less important than the performance and the balance of the car. And you kind of feel that a little bit, although I will say the seating position here is very good. Myself at 6'1", I still have about an inch of knee room, but if somebody over 6'1 was driving, I would be a little bit tight back here. And number three, we're gonna talk about the engine. And this is less of a negative and more just kind of a general wondering. You still have here on this facelifted version, the 3.3 liter twin turbocharged V6. It's a perfectly peppy engine. It makes about 365 horsepower and 376 pound feet of torque. Goes through an eight speed gearbox, all four wheels. Zero to 60 is done in about four and a half seconds. So it's a still a pretty competitive engine. But the question that I'm asking Genesis is, you have a 3.5 liter twin turbo charged V6 for your new GV70, G80, and GV80. So why did that engine not find itself under the hood here? Now my guess is that this being a facelift, still part of the same first generation, this would come into the second generation. But by the time we get a second generation of G70 here, I'm expecting things like plug-in hybrids and hybridized powertrains. So I guess if it were me, maybe it's a nitpick, but I would have liked to see that 3.5 under the hood here rather than the 3.3 but still a nice and peppy engine. And fourth and finally, and this may be a little bit of a nitpick, but on the GV70, the SUV version of this, you got a fully digital gauge cluster and you had this really interesting 3D gauge cluster. It was maybe more of a gimmick than an actually practical application for a gauge cluster, but it still looked cool. And it was something that I really liked about my time in the GV70. And here you don't get the 3D gauge cluster and you don't even get a fully digital gauge cluster. This thing is totally optioned out and you get like a two thirds digital gauge cluster. Again, maybe a bit of a nitpick, but something I would have liked to see is a fully digital cluster here. But that means that there's a lot of good stuff going on here. So let's talk about that. Number one, it's immediately obvious and it's the looks. For 2022 with the mid-cycle refresh, they made one of the more aggressive updates to a mid-cycle refresh that I've ever seen. And they brought the styling in line with the new Genesis design language. It's not like the old car was ugly. It was a pretty handsome car, but this, this is a step up. You get the typical Genesis quad headlamps we're familiar with now. You have the big shield-shaped grill that we've seen from other models. The front end is really clean and elegant while not losing the aggressive nature. Around the side, it's a very familiar shape. Of course, you do get new wheel designs, but the biggest change is the removal of the boomerang from behind the front wheels. I will miss the boomerang personally. The profile looks very sports sedan. It's very three series in its shape. The rear design mirrors that of the front with the quad taillights. You do get Genesis spelled out on your trunk now though, and your license plate moves from the trunk to your lower diffuser and bumper area. And it's sandwiched between a very big dual oval exhaust. Overall, it's a very handsome car that looks not only expensive, but fast too. Number two, we'll talk dynamics. We talk about how this car still gets the 3.3 rather than the 3.5 V6, but it's still a perfectly good engine, if I'm honest. It's got great low end torque. It pulls nice and clean and predictably all the way up and it's properly quick. But the thing I love most about this car is the steering. 
This has to be some of the best steering in a modern sports sedan that I've driven, at least over the last few years. It weights up really nicely and progressively. I've got great information coming back to me from the front end. It feels sharp, it feels athletic. It's like, it's the best part of the car. It feels like a dancing partner that you've been working with for years. And then the gearbox is nice and sharp and responsive in Sport and Sport Plus. Of course, it's smoother in comfort mode. You've got an LSD, so the car will rotate really, really well and you can get sideways in Sport Plus with your stability and traction off. The M340i is certainly the benchmark for this segment, and you do get maybe a more complete car, but I can find and play at the limit of this G70 so much better, and I feel like I'm getting better as a driver. My technique is getting better, so this is just, it's really rewarding to drive at and near the limit. And number three, we'll talk about the new technology, which the head unit seems to be the main thing that they changed for the facelift in 2022. And Paulo will tell you himself that this new infotainment system makes the car feel a lot more expensive and a lot more upmarket. The graphics are much more in line with a luxury car. You've got a super wide aspect ratio for your screen. You still have the awesome sounds of nature and things that I love, Go Lively Forest. You've got one of the best driver assist suites out there too, the Hyundai Kia parent company. Their driver assist is just, it's top notch. You've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but weirdly they are still wired. And your 360 cameras are really good. I mean, aside from the mostly digital instrument cluster and the wired Apple CarPlay, there's really nothing that this car doesn't have. And number four then is the interior, the design, the build, the materials, and the luxury slash amenities that you get here. Aside from a marginally cramped back row, this is a really impressive interior. Especially with the new center screen, it feels so expensive and impressive when you step inside. It's almost identical to the pre-facelift, but that means you get really impressive quilting on the seats, you get expensive looking and feeling aluminum bright work, you've got the three-pod Audi R8 looking center stack, you've got a panoramic roof, kinda, and you get heated and cooled seats, a heated steering wheel, and you can get all of that wrapped in white leather, which gets me every single time. Really well done, cabin. And fifth and finally, we're gonna wrap out with price. And this is a big one. Again, we're gonna compare it to the segment leader, the BMW M340. Now you can start building the all wheel drive, twin turbocharged 3.3 liter V6 G70 for about $47,000. On the flip side, you can start building an X drive M340i for about $58,000. $400. That represents over $10,000 difference when you start building the sporty V6 or inline 6 version of each of these cars. And this G70, as equipped right here, right now, especially behind the wheel, to me is about 85 to 90% of the car that the BMW is. Maybe the BMW is a bit quicker, but you can get a pedal commander unit for your G70. And we have done some really impressive and seen some really impressive results from the pedal commander in Paulo's G70. So if you need a little extra performance, get one of those. We've got a discount code down in the description below. But no, honestly, if you're going to want to get the most out of your car as a driver, I feel so much more at home near and approaching the limit on this G70 than I do in the M340. So this is a really compelling car and I'm really impressed. So that's it. That's the best and the rest from the new G70, at least in all-wheel drive 3.3 twin turbo V6 form. Again, it is a huge bang for your buck when you consider the price difference between this and a BMW M340. You're getting so much car here and for the near and at the limit, if you're going to track your car at all or do any sort of driver improvements, this is going to be a great companion to you. So Again, I'm really impressed. Nice job, Genesis.